Hi everybody, I'm Chip and welcome to the channel and welcome back if you're already subscribed. Now sometimes you have to be a detective when you're in this washer and dryer repair business. Sometimes you get a machine and you're certain you know what's wrong with it. And when you test that component, it's not it. Then you have to go searching for clues. And that's what this video is about. I got a dryer like this the other day and I really had to search for, for, for some clues. And when I found out what was wrong with it, it surprised me. So let's get started. Here we got a Kenmore 700 series. Customer says when he tries to start it, it just clicks. Hmm. Sounds like a relay. We'll get into it and see what's going on. So at this point, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a bad control board, but I know how to fix it. So I start disassembling the machine to get to it. And here what I'm looking for is sort of a burnt spot on the plastic uh, underneath the relay on the control board. Uh, usually you'll see it within this red circle here. I don't see any right here. Nothing real obvious. For here, these four pins on the back of this relay, one of them is usually uh, it got real hot and melted the solder out of it, so it's no longer making contact and the board has failed. But that's not the case in this uh, situation. And I, after examining this board, I just reassembled it, put it back in the machine because I'm pretty sure the, the board's uh, okay.
Now here I'm gonna I'm just checking all the components on it just because I'm I'm in here I need to do that anyway. Uh, the, the worst thing you can do is uh, take a machine apart and not check these uh, components, reassemble it, and one of them is bad. So after checking all these components and find that they all work, what I'm gonna do is take my test cord and test this motor and see if it's okay. Okay, simply plugging in the test cord is not gonna make this dryer's motor work because it also has a belt tensioner switch on it. So what you need to do is reach in there and lift the uh, idle pulley up so, so you can activate the belt tension switch. Uh, and when I did this, nothing happened. Here I'm repeatedly testing the belt, ten belt tension uh, switch and nothing's going on. So it's either going to be the motor or the belt tension switch. So I'm going to test the, the tension switch mm. and then see how that goes. Test again. I noticed that the belt tension switch is clicking, so it's probably probably good. It, but there's something else going on. So I'm, I'm kind of suspecting maybe maybe I'm not getting power to the motor. So what I'm going to do now is test my uh, test lead, make sure I have 120 volts going uh, to the motor. So here I plug one of the wires into the power cord, and now when I plug the other one in, sure enough, I'm getting 120 volts, so it's not the power cord, so I am getting power to the motor. Now before I plug it back in, I'm, I'm going to be sure to reach in there, and I'm testing all the uh, wires that are going to the, the motor switch. And it's right here that I reach around behind the tension switch and I, when I push on the connector there, it kind of snapped back into place. So I'm kind of thinking that that connector may have been disconnected from the tension switch all along. And that may be a, what was causing the problem. So I took the leads off of the motor switch and uh, I tested the motor switch for continuity as you can see in this uh, little clip here. And at this point, I was pretty pretty sure that I had a bad motor, but I was going to test it one more time after I hooked everything back up, and this is the result. It worked, and it surprised me because I didn't think that anything would happen when I lifted that idler pulley. Thank you. 
said and done, I'm still not certain what was wrong with this machine. I suspect that it was a loose wire on that tension switch and when I pushed that connector in it did snap but it was a very solid connection so I don't think it could have worked its way uh, out. It was probably a, a manufacturing mistake. Maybe a Friday afternoon and somebody didn't uh, connect that connector the way it should have gone. Anyway, I fixed it but I kept it for about the rest of the day and part of the next morning and I ran as many uh, loads in it as I could to make sure that it didn't fail again for the customer before it picked it up. Anyway, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up and think about subscribing. See ya.